One of the best pieces of advice somebody ever gave me doing the Frog Week Conservation Project was explaining that just because a frog is listed as common or abundant does not mean it's going to be seen everywhere. Even though we've done a lot of work finding a frog, the Eastern Gray Tree Frog, that was never documented in Cambria or Somerset County's history, the frog that's truly the most elusive for our team is the pickerel frog. That might sound like a surprise because the further south you go, the more water you find, the more likely you'll find a pickerel frog. However, we focus on the woods and forests, so finding a pickerel frog is a little bit harder than it might seem. I was determined to capture more footage this field season of pickerel frogs than ever before. That meant utilizing every tool in the toolbox, using the Bluetooth speaker and even the 4K infrared binoculars that you're seeing here. Only the eye shine was visible of these pickerel frogs, and as you could see, American bullfrogs, northern green frogs, and even spring peepers come out clear as day whenever you focus these binoculars on them. The pickerel frogs provide a serious challenge because they don't give you access most times to see them clear as day like these frogs. They're well hidden and you can only hear their calls, which makes it problematic if you're trying to film them for a nature documentary. I was very unsuccessful trying to find these pickerel frogs in these new locations, so I had to resort to going back to the drawing board and revisiting a place that I knew the pickerel frogs were abundant and they were also much easier to access. It was going to mean getting my feet wet a little bit, but if that's what it takes to bring you a really good documentary episode featuring these guys, then I was determined to do it. Poised to get the best footage I've ever captured and the most footage of a pickerel frog, I made sure that I was gonna leave no stone unturned for this year. So take a look at these beautiful, clear shots of these male pickerel frogs. Just a disclaimer, this is the Bluetooth speaker, and they're giving a small chirp back, so focus on that as you watch these pickerel frogs respond to my calls. Beautiful little pickerel frog. It's a male. There he is, guys. Here is a male pickerel frog. 
beautiful frog. He's tolerant of the cold conditions. Just about 48 to 49 degrees. This is only a handful of times that I've actually held a pickerel frog. I try to be really hands off with these guys, but let's do one more clip here. So I am holding one of our newest target species for PA Woods and Forests. This is the pickerel frog. This is a male. I was playing the audio and Maria was filming me. Hopefully we got the callback of him responding to me playing audio. These guys are one of my favorites. They are one of the most, in my opinion, beautiful frogs that we have in the state. And I think in the country, so mysterious with these frogs because they have a toxin that can actually cause you to go numb and honestly you can they can burn your hands now it only ever happened to me once it was with a female pickerel frog i went to pick it up it was the very first time ever that i picked one up and my hands were actually burning afterwards so i'll let you guys know honest truth if he causes me to get irritated but uh, i don't actually advocate for picking up frogs and toads in the wild um, even with a fishing license i try to be hands off but sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures and if i wanted to show you guys this scene of this beautiful frog then i had to get my hands in the water i had to catch him he's warming himself up i don't know if you could see this on video but there's actually steam coming off of him as well as my hand and the mud so if you can't see that it's fine but it is a cold night but that is exactly what these pickerel frogs enjoy um, they like it a little bit warmer than the wood frogs they like the 40s whereas the wood frogs will be active in the 30s um, as we're getting warmer though these frogs are going to finish their breeding season they have a very small window they're not explosive breeders but they're also not um, going to stay out the entirety of frog week so american toads and great tree frogs will breed throughout the entirety of frog week at a certain point whenever it's their turn to come out and be active they'll stay out till the end Pickerel frogs and wood frogs have a very small window of opportunity, and if you miss it, then you're, you're done for the year. So we've missed it a few times. We, sadly to report, we have missed it, uh, but it's in the learning process of understanding what these animals are and how unique they are, being mountainous frogs that love cold streams, but also being frogs that do very well in a reservoir. I also wanna say this while, I'm, while we're filming, I do actually feel my hands starting to burn a little bit. So very interesting to report this, but where his front leg is here, I can feel it. I can actually feel it burning. Uh, and I haven't felt this in a long time. So it just kind of comes on to you, a burning sensation, and then it just stays. So I can feel it where he's actually sitting. Um, not that he's a threat, not that he's a problem. You know, I sought him out and I held him. So it's all kind of up to me, like it was my decision to do this, uh, but that's just a, testament to these frogs with their toxin that my flesh is literally I feel like a burning sensation and again never felt that holding a, a pickerel frog for at least three or four years but I never held them this long either so maybe the longer you hold them the more likely you are to burn um, and I've you know these hands are always out in the field so for me to get a burning sensation this quickly it's not something that uh, normally happens I've never reported something like this so open field observations right here. So I already got some wet feet tonight. Thankfully, Maria was here and now I have little princess socks that I'm gonna have to wear the rest of the way home. I normally come packed with all kinds of stuff and I do, I have shirts, I have pants, I have shoes, I have boots, tick spray, nets. I just, I didn't have socks. And of all nights not to have socks when you're hunting for pond frogs that's the first thing i guess you should be thinking about and i wasn't so i don't know it's fitting that it's the little mermaid too right because i was frolicking around in the pond there or in the reservoir so i guess lo and behold to me next time you're hunting pickerel frogs to film bring some socks note to self if you're going to hunt pickerel frogs at night infrared binoculars a bluetooth speaker some waders, and extra socks.
when I get a couple of shots. This is one of the episodes that we feature pickerel frogs if you want to learn about them. They're a very cool frog species. Like we talked about, they have the skin toxin, but they're a very good indicator of good water quality. So he's there. He might be eating the beetles, to be honest with you. Um, but he blended in so well. I mean, if I didn't know what I was looking at, I don't think I would have seen him. I want to talk to you guys real quick. I have special binoculars here. You, you know, that nobody asks any questions. You guys are the first to not ask questions. Like, why? It's nighttime. Why does he have binoculars? So these binoculars have infrared, which means I can use these and turn on night vision mode, and I can see the frog. So see how it's dark, and let me focus it real quick. So I'll show you guys. It's, it's still light enough that I could get a nice clear image, which is there? surprising. But um, watch this, I'm gonna switch over to night vision. This year, we accomplished our mission of finding more locations and more pickerel frogs for this field season. Not only that, but we wanted to be mindful because over the last two years, you guys have specifically watched more of the pickerel frog episode than any other episode for Frog Week. So with care and consideration, we wanted to keep growing and finding ways to conserve this species in Western Pennsylvania. That's gonna do it for this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share for more Frog Week content. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks.